This is Five on Your Side at noon, focused on you. As we go on the air at noon, we're watching some rain and storms in our southern counties. Here's a live look from 100 above the park. That is Forest Park in your immediate foreground. Maybe you can see some of those darker clouds on the horizon. Cloudy, dry and warm in the immediate St. Louis area right now. Thanks for being here. I'm Kay Quinn. We're heading into the weekend with that slight chance of rain and it's going to get a lot hotter. Let's get right to meteorologist Jim Castillo. He has the weather impact forecast. Yeah, lots to talk about. So just looking around the area, it depends on where you are. Cuba, Missouri, plenty of sunshine and then Farmington. Look how cloudy it is there. Uh, you have had some heavy rain from time to time, some thunder and lightning in there. Hillsboro, you've had some rain in Jefferson County and then Weldon Spring. A lot of clouds around. The sun is definitely trying to peak out though and right through the St. Louis area. So let's check out this weather impact Doppler radar. Let's zoom in. You know, Interstate 64 right through Illinois was just covered in rain uh, the last couple of hours, but all of that seems to be dissipating right now and moving out of the viewing area. And then also Jefferson County, those showers and storms have really dissipated. Showers around Potosi right now, and then it's rain free from Carrollton to Bowling Green. But we had a couple of showers and storms around Bowling Green over the last few hours. And then just checking Dent County getting wet right now, and that's moving into portions of Iron and also Reynolds County. There is a very low severe weather threat, mainly Perry County, Missouri, Madison County, Missouri, and the southern portion of Jefferson County, Illinois. And if you get a severe cell, it's really 60 mile per hour wind and also that hail up to quarter size. Uh, orange for air quality forecast. Haven't seen that this year yet. We'll talk more about this and main weather coming up. All right, thank you, Jim. We'll see you then. Right now, a man is facing new charges following a shooting at Molly's in Soulard. The man you see on your screen is Anthony Cadillo. The new charges include first degree assault and armed criminal action connected to the incident Wednesday night. Our Robert Townsend brings us reaction from concerned neighbors and business owners. Around 1130 Wednesday night, investigators say a fight first broke out inside Molly's after two men were kicked out for allegedly stealing a watch and cell phone. Molly's owner approached the men and asked them to return the items. According to a police report, one of the guys hit the owner in the head before security calmed him down. Police say minutes later, the man went to a car, grabbed a gun, came back and shot the business owner in his leg. Officers arrested one of the men, the other ran off. This comes less than 24 hours after a rolling shootout in the neighborhood. Area business owners say it's got to stop. That's a bad thing. In March, burglars broke into Danny Hammerstone's nearby restaurant. They grabbed our cash register drawers, but you know, there's nothing in them at night. It's terrible because you get violated. Crime's down actually in Soulard. Still, two shootings in two days are unnerving for neighbors. I think what anybody thinks that it's horrible, I'm scared, and I'm sad. LaSalle Park resident Irene Allen visited this Soulard Park today. She, too, is fed up with the citywide gun violence. In the midst of it, I've seen an actual community cropping up. If we can just build on that community and hang on to that community. Robert Townsend, five on your side. Now, according to data gathered by our newsroom, at least three people have been shot in Soulard so far this year. Guaranteed basic income payments will continue going out in the city of St. Louis while a judge reviews a petition to stop them. It's all connected to an ongoing lawsuit against the program. It provides around 500 families with $500 per month by using funding from the American Rescue Plan Act. The Holy Joe Society is now suing the city, saying the program defies the city charter by using public money for private ends. The city says it is constitutional because the program ultimately serves a public end. On Monday, the judge is expected to make a decision on whether to stop all payments during the lawsuit since that money can't be returned. Right now, the city of Manchester has a new acting police chief. Wednesday, the department's chief, Scott Will, was placed on administrative leave. Five on your side is told that leave is part of an ongoing in independent investigation. On Tuesday, Captain Craig Smith, the deputy police chief, resigned from his position. Right now, Lieutenant Ed Skaggs is the acting police chief. 
An update now, the city of DeSoto one step closer to having an Amtrak stop. According to our partners at Leader Publications, the new Missouri state budget set aside a million dollars to pay for one. The proposed platform would be near the public library. Amtrak would make at least two stops a day. In the meantime, the city will meet with Amtrak and work on a design for the platform. Now to the latest on a massive sinkhole. The mining industry is investigating the situation and giving us a look at their plan moving forward. Here's Five on Your Side, Sydney Stallworth. Our newsroom has seen a lot of chatter online and reporting from other outlets that the sinkhole is growing. Take a look behind me from where we stand. Don't get me wrong. It's absolutely massive, but we did want to check in with representatives from crews on the ground. They tell us the sinkhole itself has not grown in size. Here's a look over the sinkhole from our Skylands 5 drone. The collapse was a result of a subsidence of an underground limestone mine owned by New Frontier Materials. New Frontier Materials is doing the investigative drilling. It remains a big concern for residents as well as local and state officials. We caught up with Illinois Governor J.B. Prisker, who recently sent a letter to the mining company asking them to quickly make repairs. We're working very hard to make sure that that is not a problem that goes forward uh, in Alton and of course that we get the federal government uh, involved, but we're going to make sure that we're doing everything we can because people need, I mean that is, it's shocking really. I'm so glad that there was nobody on that field when that happened, but the question is why did it happen and what's the federal government going to do to make sure it never happens again. Here's the incredible moment the sinkhole opened up on the soccer fields at Gordon Moore Park all caught on camera. Nobody was hurt. The mining company is investigating the collapse and tell our newsroom that crews are digging and sending their findings to the Mine Health Safety Administration. Here's one more look from our Skylands 5 drone up in the sky. At latest update from the Alton Mayor's office on July 9th, Five on Your Side was told the city, New Frontier Materials, and the Mine Health Safety Administration are making, quote, significant progress in this investigation. They're currently doing investigative drilling under the Park Access Road. Governor Pritzker also said in a statement that Alton residents deserve a thorough and well communicated investigation. Now crews on the ground here and Alton's Mayor David Goins are going to be meeting sometime this week to share their findings. And then we're expecting to hear from Mayor Goins on Tuesday at 10 a.m. with an update on this investigation. Of course, we'll bring you the very latest on air and on KSDK.com. That's the very latest from here in Alton. I'm Sydney Stallworth, five on your side. President Biden reaffirming his intentions to stay in the presidential race. What his critics and supporters are saying in response to his decision. It is summer in St. Louis, the favorite flick you can catch tonight on Art Hill.